world, I'm Mathophilia, and welcome to my very first YouTube video. Today, we'll be talking about Huron's formula. If you don't know it, Huron's formula is this, a formula to get the area of a triangle given its side lengths. Huron's formula is the kind of thing that you learn about in school, but you never really get a satisfying proof that really explains why. There are a number of proofs to Huron's formula that you could have learned, but they're all trash because they're disgusting bash. And you know it's true because it rhymes. However, there is one proof that rises above them all. For some reason, most people don't know this proof, but it's much more elegant than the algebraic or trigonometric ways, and doesn't include trig. And if you do know this proof, well then, watch this anyways, because I need watch hours. <laughs> anyways, this is the outline of the proof. First, we'll find lengths from the in circle. Next, we'll find lengths from the x circle. Next, we'll use similar triangles to find the in radius. And finally, we'll use the in radius for the area. Part 1. Finding lengths from the in circle. Let's start with a triangle, ABC, with side lengths A, B, and C. Inside of that, we'll put the in circle, which is the circle that fits snugly inside and hits each of the sides in exactly one point. Let's find the lengths from those points to A, B, and C. This may seem like an impossible task, but we can use this key fact, that the red segments are equal, the green segments are equal, and the blue segments are equal. This is because of a very special theorem. And what is this theorem called? The ice cream cone theorem. Bet you won't forget it now. Moo ha 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 ha. Actually though, I don't think anyone calls it that except me. See, looks like an ice cream cone. You can prove it easily by seeing that both of these angles are 90 degrees, and the orange and blue sides are the same. So, the Pythagorean theorem says that the tangent lines, CD and CE, both have length square root of blue squared minus orange squared. So, they're equal. Let's call these lengths X, Y, and Z. We want to find X, Y, and Z in terms of A, B, and C. Looking at each of the sides, we know that y plus z equals a, x plus z equals b, and x plus y equals c. So, now we have three equations and three unknowns. There's a lot of ways of solving for x, y, and z, but the easiest is to first add the three equations, and then divide by 2 to get x plus y plus z. Like, we can let s be equal to a plus b plus c over 2 called the semi-perimeter, or half the perimeter, because we'll end up using it a lot. So, subtracting each of the original equations from this one, we get x is equal to s minus a, y is equal to s minus b, and z is equal to s minus c. Hmm, these values look like something in Huron's formula. Hint, hint, hint. Part 2, finding lengths from the x circle. The X circle is just like the in circle, but it's outside of the triangle instead of inside it. Each triangle actually has three X circles, one for each side, but we'll only look at one of them for this proof. Let P be the X radius, which is just the radius of the X circle. We can notice that BF is equal to BH, the red segments, and AF is equal to AG, the green segments, because of the ice cream cone theorem. So, when we create these blue lines, we can fold them over to see that HC plus GC is equal to the perimeter of the triangle. And, because of the ice cream cone theorem, HC is actually equal to GC. So, each of them is equal to exactly half of the perimeter, or S. Part 3. Using similar triangles to solve for the in radius. Now, there are two pairs of similar triangles. The first is the red triangle and the green triangle, because they both have 90 degrees on the bottom, and they both have this angle. This means that the ratio of their side lengths is the same, because they're just scaled pictures of each other. Using part 2, we know that GC is equal to S, and using part 1, we know that this length is equal to S minus C. So plugging it all in, we get R over P is equal to S minus C over S. For the next pair of similar triangles, we'll need to look at the angles a little deeper. 
we'll first prove that the red angles are equal and the green angles are equal. Let's go back to our ice cream cone theorem picture. Since the two triangles have all the same side lengths, they are congruent and must also have all the same angles. So this is equal to this and this is equal to this. Let these two angles be D. Their sum is 2D. And since this line on the bottom is 180 degrees, e this is 180 minus 2D. And since these two angles are equal, each of them is 90 minus D. And now, since these are right angles, and the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees, these are each 180 minus 90 minus D, which is 90 minus D. And by the same reasoning, these are both D. We can see that the red triangle and the green triangle are similar because they have all the same angles. And now we can use part one to have AD is equal to S minus A, and that comes in right here. And now we can use part two, which shows that this long length GC is equal to S. So this length is equal to S minus B because this length is B. So, since similar triangles have lengths of the same ratios, we have that S minus A over R is equal to P over S minus B. And we cross multiply to get RP is S minus A times S minus B. Okay, so now we have the quotient of R and P and the product of R and P. We're only looking for R right now, so we can multiply the two equations to get rid of P. And now, we can just take the square root and get that r is equal to the square root of s minus a times s minus b times s minus c over s. Wow, this is looking a lot like Huron's formula now. Part four, using the in radius for the area. The point of the formula is to find the area of ABC. So let's look at some of the areas within the triangle. The yellow area is b times r over two because the base is b and the height is r. Similarly, this green one is cr over 2, and this pink one is ar over 2. So the total area is cr over 2 plus ar over 2 plus br over 2, which is r times a plus b plus c over 2, which is just r times the semi-perimeter. And now, plugging in our value for r, we get, uh, we get that the area is equal to s times the square root of s minus a times s minus b times s minus c over s. To simplify, we can put the s inside the square root. Then we cancel out the s's to get Huron's formula. The square root of s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c. And that's it. Let's end the video by looking at this proof from a high level. We started by looking at the lengths from the in circles intersections with the triangle these three points, and A, B, and C. We then looked at the X circle's intersection with the triangle and proved that G, C is a semi-perimeter. We then noticed similar triangles and used the previous lemmas to solve for the in radius. And finally, we used the in radius to find the area. If you liked this video, consider clicking the like button and subscribing so I can make more videos. And if you didn't like this video, well, like and subscribe anyways, so I can make more videos for you to make fun of. You really have no excuse now. Mwahahaha. <laughs> Thanks for watching.